Hey everybody, it's Dr. Carmen Bryant. How are you guys doing? I know I normally don't come on on Mondays, but um, I was out in this beautiful uh, Pacific Northwest weather. It is really, really nice. And I'm hot, cold, hot, cold. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm hot, cold, hot, cold. You know what I mean? Okay, some of you guys are going to get it. Those 50 women, you're going to get it. All right, let's do this. So I was um, I was looking into like how lions hunt, right? And it was saying that you know some lions, like the male lions, they will you know they're up to almost 400 some odd pounds. I didn't know lions were that big. I know they were big, but I didn't know they were that big. They're like almost 400 something pounds. And for the male lions, for some male lions, they hunt bigger animals than the female lions do and so the male lions will hunt like big old giant wildebeest and things like that and the female lions they hunt like you know gazelles and things like that um for some lions they will hunt those when they when they prey because they're the predators when they prey they will look for um prey that uh, some of them have separated themselves from the pride, I mean, not the pride, from the from the group or like the weaker, slower um, animals, but they can also sense when there's injury. Um, and for others, they will hunt, you know, um, they hide in the grass and they hunt. But check this out. This is what I found out. I found out that lions like to hunt in storms. I want you to think about that for a minute because we're dealing with narcissists, but lions like to hunt in storms. And the reason why they like to hunt in storm is because in storms is because of the fact, number one, it um, hinders the hearing. Uh, it, it messes with the hearing of the prey. So when they're in the grass and they're in a storm, prey cannot really hear that well. They can't hear the rustling of grass which the lion is hiding it. Number two, it also messes with the vision. So the prey can't really see the lion and storm as well as they could see during the daytime or when the, the atmosphere is clear, you know, the, the, their vision is clear. So it messes with their vision and it messes with their hearing. Number three, it also messes with their sense of smell uh, because they cannot smell the, the predator, you know, the lion, when they're laying out there. So they can get really, really close. They can't hear them, they can't smell them, and they really can't see them. So I want you to think about that for a moment. Now, fortunately, when you are dealing with a narcissist, you're dealing with a predator. And that predator is looking for opportunity. And the best way to hunt you is to check to see when you are in a storm. You know, they, they watch. A lot of them watch. And when you say watch, what do you mean watch? Some of them are watching you in your daily life. When you go to work, you know, when you when you go out to eat, when you go get coffee. You know, a lot of them have, have locked in. They see you. They're watching you. You know, they have... Uh, you work at a coffee shop, you work at a certain place, you work at certain things, and best place is social media. They watch you on social media. Um, a lot of you, when you're making videos, they can sense when you are still hurting, when you are in pain, when you are, you know, when you're giving out information and you're giving that information out from a place of pain, place of hurt. They watch the comments that people make uh, in the videos to see which one of you are hurting. And I I tell you guys all the time be careful when you put your information out there some of you put entirely too much information out there when you are having a conversation with the content creator you're putting all your information out there some of you guys I don't care I'm just gonna say what I have to say but you become an narc bait because there are predators that come on to YouTube channels to watch to see how the content creator is creating information and what they're saying how they're saying it in the mood that they're saying it is they're watching your facial expressions, they're watching watching or listening to your voice inflection, they're listening to, um, you know, what information you're putting out and how you're putting it out, put it that way. And of course, they're watching your, um, 
your uh, the, the people that are making comments on your content and they're listening or they're not listening they're reading at what you are saying and so some of them will go and stalk you or watch you or even on your content those of you content creators they're watching you what do you think how do you think the narcissist is evolving they're not learning they're evolving and then for for a lot of you you think about it you know a lot of you when you are in a storm or when you are in pain you're not listening to the red flags you're not listening to what they're saying they're telling you who they are they're telling you what they're doing and who they are and the thing about it is they're never going to give you even the ones that are making content they're never going to tell you um all of the ways that you can destroy a narcissist you know why would they tell you that you know and then on top of that they also know who you know you don't think that they're that stupid they're not as stupid as you think they are some people think that a narcissist is that stupid they're some of them not as dumb as you think they are some of them are highly intelligent why do you think you have the cerebral narcissist and some of them like most of them are opportunists you know they're watching you they're taking opportunity they're looking for the weakest link you know they're looking for them they're hurting prey they're they're looking think about it in the storm in the lion in the storm you're you're hearing you can't you're not listening to what they're saying you're looking for something to keep you from hurting you it feels good when they when they feed you know when they feed you the emotions that you're looking for so it feels good when you hear them talking to you or complimenting you or making you feel better or contact me and i understand what you're saying and it makes you feel good that's what you're looking for and then your vision you know you're looking right at something but you're not paying attention to what you're seeing and you make excuses you justify what you're seeing and a lot of times what you see and what you're hearing they're telling you the truth they're telling you who they are and when they tell you who they are believe them the first time but for most people you know you you're trying to give the person the benefit of the doubt you don't believe that a person can be that cruel or that evil and when you're dealing with a narcissist sometimes you cannot explain you know like like uh, Dr. Phil said and like many people say you know sometimes science doesn't explain everything you're not you, you, science does not explain everything there is something behind that mental health and i understand it not everybody is a believer we understand that but you could tell that there is something very evil behind this disorder you know yes i understand people are ah, you're trying to spiritualize everything but i guarantee you one thing that we can all agree to is there's something not right there's something beyond just a mental health disorder a psychological um, disorder a personality disorder I tell you guys over and over again be careful be careful what you're saying be careful that you're not putting all your business out there be careful you know when you are in pain is not the time to have a conversation to talk or tell all your business because when you're dealing with a predator they pick up on all that they pick up on your tone they pick up on your inflection in your voice they pick up and they talk they're talking to you to find out where are you hurting trauma bond trauma bonding to connect with someone or find a place and this is just in addition to but to find a place where there is some similarities or familiarities familiarities in the pain that you two have experienced but you have to remember that yes a narcissist may have been through some things and and they'll relate to you they get to that that common that common pain but they're not feeling empathy like you are they're not feeling your pain like you are they're just trying to find that's that cognitive empathy and they're trying to find some similarities and you connect with them because finally someone that understands why do you think it's so easy for them to make um videos you know why do you think it's so easy for them to talk because you're trying to get someone to relate to your pain when you are in pain that's not the time that you connect with people and have new new romantic or close relationships you need to heal because you're giving off that painful vibe and when you're making videos don't think for a minute that they don't pick up on the pain and that's for all of us even content creators all of us have to be very careful and who we connect with or who's making comments or who is you know trying to connect with you because they're watching they're watching believe it or not they're watching they're watching some of them are in the local areas where you work at some of them friends family um co-workers um like i said just be careful be careful out there because they're watching you they're watching and they're picking up on everything and the best place to pick up on you is in the midst of the storm when you're vision and you're hearing you know you're not picking up like you're supposed to pick up you are your hope is the thing to go my phone rang but hope is the last thing to go and they know this and they usually hunt those people that are in a place of a storm 
place that they're hurting be careful people be careful people you know don't just don't underestimate a narcissist don't underestimate what they will do